Glory, 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 glory. Well, thank you all for joining us once again for our Wednesday night intercessory prayer service. We pray that you have a good experience today in the Lord. Amen. And uh, we want you to take part in the service. We want you to pray right along with us as we pray. We don't want you to be a spectator. We want you to be a, a participator. We want you to, to see the power of God resting upon your lives, showing you the way where you can get your prayers answered. And it's all through spending time with the Lord. God is calling the church to intercessory prayer. We are looking for prayer warriors. Would you like to be one of our prayer warriors? If you do, go to my website, ladbergerministries.com. We're going to start a prayer chain. So go, go to my website and let's come together in unity. And let's begin to pray all around the world for our countries, for our nations, and for our people. And especially for the leaders. Amen. Let's pray right now. Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is alive and health and healing to all our flesh. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that all things do work together for good for them that love you, Father, and to those who are called according to your purpose. Oh, Lord God Almighty, there is none like you, Father. There is none like you. So, Father, we look to you with boldness and with confidence because we know that you are God. And if anybody can, can, can cause the, the, the situation to change, you can. Because you can do all things. There's nothing you can't do. So, Father, we look to you with confidence. Yes. Even as the Jehoshaphat looked to you and turned his heart to you in prayer when he saw that, that his people and himself was in danger. God, we come to you now in Jesus' name. Because I see danger, Lord God. I see danger coming upon our land. And I'm asking your Father in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you, oh God, will show forth your mercy upon your people. Father, for I know that the world is, 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 is walking in darkness. But your people, Lord God, are walking in light. And as we continue to walk in light, you are not allowed the darkness to overcome us. But you will show us the way out. You will show us the way out. Though men, so men of the afflictions of the righteous. But Lord you always deliver the righteous. And so Father we thank you. That the word of deliverance. Is come today. To our hearts. And as we hear your word. And as we proclaim your word. And as we preach your word. And teach your word. Yes, God you confirm your word. With signs following. As you said in Mark chapter uh, 16. Mm -hmm. And verse 20. You went with the disciples, confirming the word with signs following. Yes, so, Father, I thank you that you are the same, according to yes, Malachi 3 and 6. You are the same, yes. and you change not. And so I thank you, Lord God, that your word yes, is yes. still has the life-giving resource that, 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 is, that is built within it. And as we lean upon your word, and as we yield to your word, your word will cause us to rise from a, a, a position of, 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 of lukewarmness and it will cause us to become hot on fire and, and ready to, to, to go forth in the things of God like never before, declaring your goodness and your mercies. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we glorify you in Jesus' name for what you're going to do. And what you're doing in our lives, even now, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit excited right now because I, I'm sensing some things in my spirit. And God spoke to me on yesterday about, about something that, uh, that I'm going to, and I'm going to research this, what God spoke to my heart. 
and we're going to begin to uh, we're going to see going to, uh, minister that word to you. God gave me a powerful word yesterday while I was uh, out in my vehicle, and uh, we're going to we're going to minister that word to you in 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 upcoming days. Amen. And it's going to be a word that's it's going to be a seasoned word for 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 you and for me today, right where we are. Amen. And so. I just want you to know and want you to begin to expect that when because when God give me something like that, I I just wait on him for the give me some more revelation concerning that. And once I receive the revelation, we 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 go forward with that because I believe that this ministry is set here to be a blessing to you and to all those under the sound of my voice. Father, I thank you for those our listeners today. I thank you, Father, for those that are listening with us today. I pray, Father, that you would touch their hearts. I pray, Father, that you would supernaturally move on their behalf. Oh, God, I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to a new life in Christ Jesus Church where Jesus Christ is glorified. We've been dealing with a message here on Wednesday night's uh, intercessory. God's call for intercessory prayer warriors. Amen. God is calling for intercessory prayer warriors. And you are, you know what? You are one of those prayer warriors that God is calling. And I want you to prepare your hearts. And I want you to, 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 to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you right now. Amen. Concerning that area. Because I believe that it's not a coincidence that you're listening to this program. I believe that God has, has, has ordained you to listen to this program to strengthen you. Because, see, there's a lot of intercessors out there, but a lot of them has grown weary. A lot of them has gone weak, and they're looking for strength. And God want to strengthen you. God want to encourage you. God want to empower you. He want to refire you. He want to refire you. Amen. He want to set you on fire once again. So you will have that zeal to go forth and to declare. You will not be ashamed. You will not be barked down because of what people might say or think about you. But you're going to stand firm in these last days. You're going to declare what God said, regardless of what it looked like. Amen. You're going to declare what God said. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm just thanking God for, the, for that time that we're going to spend together today. Amen. 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 Well, glory to God. So I'm going to, you know, an uh, intercessor, an uh, intercessor is one that, that stands in the gap. An intercessor is it's a mediator, someone that, that, that stands in the gap and make up the hedge, someone that, that go to God on the behalf of, of someone else amen see we are that people that God is looking for to stand in the gap amen we are that people and God is looking at us right now because see we're in a time right now that God is looking for his his mighty warriors to come forth his prayer warriors amen God is calling us to come forth and to begin to stand in the gap and make up the hedge for our nation for our families for our children Amen. For our for our school systems. Amen. For our for our for our country. For our our our, our people. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we we have a responsibility. You might say, "Well, Pastor, I don't see it that way." Well, you do have a responsibility. If you're a born again child of God, you have a responsibility, and you don't have to try to do it in your own strength. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter five, chapter six. I mean, the book of Ephesians, chapter six. You don't, you know, you don't have to fight this battle in your own strength, amen. Because God has given you, He's given you His strength. He's given you His ability. He's given you all that He is, amen. In the book of Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, I want you to look with me in chapter six. Glory to God. In chapter six, and notice what it said. Notice what it said right here in in verse number, in verse number ten. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You see, we are servants of God. Amen. And he wants to walk in obedience to him in every area of our lives as, 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 his, as his servants. Amen. We're not just servants, but we are his children. We are his, we are his offspring. Amen. Because we are heirs with God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Everything that He has belongs to us. And when we get a hold of that, when we if, when we get a hold of that and begin to uh, uh, meditate upon that, I'm telling you, it'll change your whole outlook. Amen. 
It'll change your whole outlook and you'll see yourself the way God see you. And that's when you're going to begin to be strong in the Lord. Because see, until you start seeing yourself the way God see you, you're always looking at your ability. You're always looking at your knowledge. You're always looking at what you can do. Amen. I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I, cause see, I used to do that. But when I began to, when I began to put my confidence in the Lord, I began to look at the bigness of my God instead of the little, the littleness that was in me. Because <laughs> I, I saw myself one able to accomplish nothing on my own. But when I looked to the bigness of my God, ah, my God, I, my spiritual muscles begin to flex, and I can say I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. Because greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Ain't that right? Glory to God. God is on our side. If God is on our side, then who can be against us? Amen, amen, amen. So he said, find my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. What is he? We, we're talking about us. Uh, we're talking about intercessory prayer warriors. Amen. You go, if you're going to be an intercessory prayer warrior, you can't do it in your own strength. You got to trust in his strength. You got to trust in his strength. Notice what it says in verse number, verse number 11 now. <clears throat> he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You see, we're not dealing with a, a natural battle here. We're dealing with a spiritual battle. We're dealing with the we're dealing with a spiritual this is this is this is you know we might we might have conflict with our loved one. We might get angry with our coworker. We might we might say something we don't you know we shouldn't say. But still we have an advocate with the Father. That's standing in the gap for us even now, forever interceding for us. His name is Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. And so when we come to that place to enter, when we come to that place to rest in Him, to put our confidence in Him, we can rest assured that all things do work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to His paper, His purpose. Amen. So when we look at verse number eleven, He said, "Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able." To stand against the wiles of the devil. You know the devil is full of. He's he, he's very tricky. He, you know he he very deceitful. He very treacherous. And so we have to be in the spirit of God in order to discern the treasure, the the tricks of the enemy or the, or the deceit of the enemy. Amen. We have to be in the spirit of God. You know, uh, at the beginning of the year, you know God did speak to my heart, and he said he said, Larry, I don't I want you to fast. Right, you know, seven days. I don't want you to fast like you normally fast, but I want you to fast throughout the year. I want you to fast the first day, the first fast. I want you to do a seven day fast, and that was at the first of the year. He said, "I want you to do a seven day fast." But he did. But then he said, "But every month after that, I want you to fast three days out of each month." And I said, "Oh God, that's you know that's 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 a lot of fasting." But you know, and then he said, and then I said, "Well, why do you want to fast so much?" And then, and then he just, he just, he just um, imposed on my, impressed on my heart, and said, he said, he said, son, because my body has become desensitized to my spirit, and as we fast, and as we spend time with him on a monthly base, not just one time a year fasting, but every month fasting, at least three times a. Uh, uh, three days out of the month, God said, "You will resensitize your spirit to my spirit. You will hear. You, you will know when I'm speaking to you. You will recognize when I'm leading you. Should danger come up before you, I will be able to protect you because you will hear my voice. You know, when I when God began to tell me about that, I just said, "Whoa!" I said, "Whoa!" Amen. So the same thing apply to you that God has said to me. I want to encourage you. Amen. Because God is wanting to resensitize us. Because see, what God spoke to me yesterday, it didn't come because it didn't come to me because I just just working or just messing buying my own business. It came to me because I had been I had been sensitizing myself to the Spirit of God. And when God spoke to me, I, I said, I said, I said, I told my wife, I said, Honey, I said God just spoke to me, and I told I told her what what God said. She said, Whoa, that's powerful. Amen. But before I can release that. To you, I have to, I have to do, I have to research it, and I have to uh, be ready to bring it to you in a way where you can receive it, Amen. Because see, it's powerful. God is about to do something very powerful in the earth, and He's looking at men and women that will resensitize themselves to His Word and to His Spirit, Amen. And how are we going to do that? By spending time with Him, like we're doing right now. But uh, 
through intercessory, amen, in the word and in prayer. Intercessory in word and in prayer. Spending time with him. Going into our prayer closets, amen. Spending time with him. Three times a month. On a, now see, this is God. This is a God called fast. This is not something that we just decided that we wanted to do. This is a God called fast. Three times a, a month. And I got some people that listen to me online, and they tell me that they that they're fasting. That they already doing it fast with me every month. Amen. You know, I'm not. I don't set no dates for you to do it. God didn't tell me to set a date for you to do it. If you want to join us on this fast three times a month, three three days out of each month, you do it. You ask God, God, what three days out of the month did you want me to fast for this month? And then next month you come, well, Lord, what three days out of the month did you want me to fast for this month? And then not only you ask him that, you ask him, what area would you have me to intercede for doing that fast? Or what what would you have me to pray for doing that? Get God to, see, God is, God is wanting to speak to your hearts. He wanted to speak to your hearts, and that's why intercessory prayer right now is so important. Because, see, darkness is in, I mean, America has been has been uh, uh, hijacked. <laughs> I'm going to put it that America has been hijacked, and we have to, uh, I'm telling you, God is calling us, his people, he's calling his people to come back in position that they will be the sons of God that God has ordained. Amen. Now, friend, listen to me. I'm not talking to you just because I can talk to you. I'm talking to you because God has given me a word for you today. God has given me a word for you today. Amen. And I want you to prepare your heart for that word. I want you to prepare your heart because, see, I'm, I'm setting you up right now. I'm setting you up to walk in power. God, When God told me to start, doing this, start teaching on this prayer, he, he said that, he said, as my people take a hold to this lesson and begin to apply it and begin to listen and begin to apply what I, what they've been taught god said i'm going to i'm going to cause the, i'm going to cause their words to become powerful in the spiritual realm see your words is about to become powerful like you never experienced in the spiritual realm and you can see because see we're not dealing with the natural realm we're dealing with the spiritual realm. prayer Deal with the spiritual realm because prayer is the doorway to the supernatural. So we're dealing with the spiritual realm, and as we deal in this area, we cannot do it half stepping. We got to go forth knowing who we are, dressed properly in the armor of God. Because see, we're not we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Amen. Look at verse number twelve with me. Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 12. He said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, friend, let me tell you something. When we begin, when we go into spiritual warfare, when we go into intercessory prayer, we're going right into spiritual warfare. Amen. Now, in spiritual warfare, we are not. Praying look mediocre prayer where it don't reach the ceiling. We are going into the spiritual realm where not only our prayer is going to reach the ceiling, but it's going to go beyond the ceiling and it's going to go into the heavens. Amen. It's going to go up into eternity because God is waiting for his word to come forth out of our hearts and out of our mouth in prayer form. He's going to take those words and he's going to begin to manifest those prayer requests. Uh, 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 as we pray according to his will he's going to begin to manifest his word in our life on the behalf of those we are praying for they are going to see the manifestation of these prayers amen and you are going to be the one that's going to be releasing that anointing because see you are anointed for this time you are anointed for this time not you know that's something that's a lot. everybody can pray but not everyone is really not everyone is called to be an intercessor because an intercessor, they have a when they have a passion to pray for the hurting people. They have a passion in their heart to pray for the for things that are, that are not you know the things that are not right. They have a passion in their heart to pray for the government. They have a passion in their heart to pray for the, for the fivefold ministry gift. See, if you have a passion to pray on the behalf of someone else, then you could be that one that God is looking for. Amen. You could be the one that God is looking for. So, notice what he said in verse number 12 again. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. You see, we're not going against uh, 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 human beings when we're going, we going to prayer. 
we're not going against human beings. We're going against spiritual beings. Amen. Spiritual beings. Now notice this. You are created in the image of God. You created in God's likeness and in God's image. You are a spiritual being. You are a spiritual being. Amen. According to uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. God created you in his image and after his likeness. Well, what is God is like? Amen. The Bible tells us in John chapter 4 verse 20 that God, verse 23 that God is a spirit. Amen. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if God is a spirit and we are created in his image, that what that make us? That make us spiritual being also. Amen. So he said, we're not, so we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual weakness in high places. Amen. Against spiritual weakness in high places. Look at verse number 13. Wherefore, take unto you what? The whole armor of God. Amen. The whole armor of God. You have to prepare your hearts right now because we are about to go into spiritual warfare. We're going to go into the we're going to go into spiritual warfare. Amen. I don't want to go now. I want you to go now yourself. Don't wait for me when we get started. I want you to begin to pray yourself. Amen. Because you see we will not be defeated. We will not be defeated. Remember, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We're going against more we're going against spiritual being. I mean spiritual being. Things that you can't see, but yet we know that they're real. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. These principalities, they are over the regions uh, right now, they are promoting these ungodly uh, uh, acts and ungodly laws and trying to bring you and me in subjection to these ungodly laws. And we, as the church, have to make up the hedge. We have to stand in the gap for the land, that God will not destroy the land. Amen. According to uh, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse chapter uh, 20 and verse 30, 22 and verse 30. Amen. For I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge that will stand in the gap before me for the land that I will not destroy, it, but I found none. So God is looking for you and he's looking for me to begin to make up the hedge and to stand in the gap. Amen. Before him for the land. How many of you know that the land is wicked? The land is growing more darker every day. Look what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah when the land became begin to be so dark and the, the the word came up to God and God sent his 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 servant his angels down to 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 see about was it all together true what 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 he what he had heard. Amen. And so but Abraham was there to make up the heads and to stand in the gap. Even though Abraham knew what was going on. Yet he had he cared for the for the people. And you see you might know what's going on around here. But you see, it's not what you know that's going to get the job done. It's your compassion for the people. If what God is looking at, our, he's looking at our hearts. Do we have compassion to make up the hedge? Do we have compassion to stand in the gap? Do we have compassion to cry out to him on the behalf of those that are hurting, those that are entrapped in deception? Amen. He's looking for someone that will say, Lord, would you spare this, would you spare this people for this amount of righteous? If you find them in this community, would you spare that community? Or would you spare that state? Or would you spare that city? Amen. Glory to God. What are we waiting for? Are we waiting for, are we waiting for, 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 for the sky to open up and Jesus to come forth with the sound of the trumpet? Amen. Before we go, before we begin to go do what he asked of us. No, we need to be about our father's business now. We need to be about our father's business now. Amen. Hey, look, folks, time is running out. We don't have time to play games no more. We have to become serious with who we are and whom we serve. If God is your God, then you serve him. Amen. If God is your God, then you serve him. But you do it with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Now let's read verse number 
verse number 12 and verse number 13 together now. He said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to, Notice what is it? That ye may be able. See, God has given you, he's given you the ability. He said that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. See, because see, if you're not putting on the whole armor, then you may be able to stand and you may not be able to stand in this evil day. Amen. Because see, we, when we notice what he said, that you may be able to, to, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, now notice what it said, having your lawn girded about with truth. Amen. Having your lawn girded about, what is the truth about the principalities and the powers? What truth can we find concerning that? Remember in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, God said in his word, Behold, I give you power over all the powers of the enemy. Amen. Now don't you consider that principalities and powers of Rulers of darkness of this world, don't you consider them our enemy or our friend? They are not our friend, folks. They are our enemy. And remember, God has given us power over all the power over our enemies. We don't have to be afraid when we enter into spiritual warfare. We don't have to wonder, are we making a mistake? No, we are standing on the word of God. We are not standing on something that we heard someone else say. We are standing on what we are reading in the word of God. And as we stand on the word of God, we stand in his strength. See, notice what it said in verse number 10. Find my brethren, be strong in the Lord. We are not acting in our own ability. We are not acting in our own strength. We are not acting in our own uh, 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 uh knowledge but we are acting on what the word of God has said yes. hallelujah hallelujah yeah I remember when I was sick well I mean my body was racking in pain I acted on the word of God for my healing I didn't I, I didn't have the money to go to the doctor I didn't have money to go to the hospital but that demon was riding my 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 my, my trying to destroy my health amen because of the my previous lifestyle but when I came to Christ, I was a new creature. But that thing didn't know that. But when I began to renew my mind and begin to pray the word, that when that thing left me, and that's what's going to happen, that's what's going to happen to our cities. That's what's going to happen to our states. That's what's going to happen to our country. When we begin to pray effectively the word of God, it's going to bring about a change like you've never experienced before. Because when I learned the word and my body was racking in pain, I was bothered or not crying like a baby. And God said, get up out of that bed and read your read the Bible. I got I got up out of my bed and I started reading my Bible. My Bible opened up to Mark chapter 16. Let's just turn right there real quick. Mark chapter 16. Because see, if you're going to be effective in your prayer life, then you need to you need to know that God is going to back He's going to back up His word. God is not going to ask you to do something that and that and this and not and that and not be able to bag it up. I never, you know, I never seen God tell me to do nothing that He would not support. If He asked me to do it, then He'll support it. Amen. If He if He told me to do something, He always support what He asked me to do. Now listen, folks. God is wanting us to. He wanted you and me to prepare our hearts to go to intercessor prayer. But you got to understand, you're not going to intercessor prayer alone. You're not going alone. Notice what he said in, in uh, here. Notice what he said here in uh, uh, in John in, in Mark chapter sixteen, Mark chapter sixteen. And I want to start. I want to start reading with verse number fifteen. Mark chapter sixteen, verse number fifteen. He says, "And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and but he that believeth not shall be damned." Now that's a, now, that, now he's he's talking he's talking now these are strong words that 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 he's speaking concerning those that disbelieve. Hey man, he said these people that don't believe are damned. They are damning themselves. We don't we don't curse them. Don't they they bring the curse upon themselves by not believing the gospel. Now notice what it said in verse number seventeen. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Notice what it said. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they what? Cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. 
they shall take up serpent. If they drink in the daily thing, it shall not hurt them. Now, I like this part right here. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I used to be very sick, and I didn't have no money to go to the doctor. Amen. I, I mean, I, I, I balled up in my bed, and I cried like a baby, and I was a grown man. Amen. I had just been called into the ministry, but I didn't know the benefits that God had given me. Amen. I didn't know what I had received as a born again child of God. But when I started reading the word, I began to see some things in the word. Oh, my God, that really that really touched my heart. And and I and I went to a church service and uh, and I heard this preacher preaching on divine health and healing. And then I went home. The devil had jumped all over me. And so I laid in my bed and started crying. God said, get up and read your Bible. And I got up and my, I opened up my Bible to this verse right here, what I'm sharing with you right now. And I began to read that verse. Then all of a sudden, I saw this scripture, verse number 18. It really started standing out in my heart. And in my, I mean, you ever read the Bible and the scripture go to jump it off at you? Well, this is what happened to me. This is what happened to me. I was reading this scripture, and, I, and it, was say, it was saying right here in verse number 18, And they shall take up serpent, if they drink any dead, deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And I like this is the part, where, and this is what really just baked my cake. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. When I was looking for apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher to pray for me or to lay hands upon me. But no one was around. And I read, the, and God said, read it again. And so I read it again. He said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devil. They shall speak with new tongue. They shall take up they, they shall take up serpent. If they drink any other thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, it finally dawned on me that the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher was not mentioned in those verses. And so I read it again. Then all of a sudden the light just came on. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any other thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Wow. Now the light is on, and, I'm, and I see and understand what God is saying. He's talking to them that believe that if they apply the word properly, they can have the manifestation of the word of God in their own life. You see, God wants to... Us, he wants to stand in the gap. He wants to make a hedge for our country, for our nation, for our people, amen, for our leaders. But we have to believe the word before we can make a difference in the earth with the word. We have to believe the word before we can make a difference in the earth with the word. Amen. The word has the power to bring about an everlasting change. But we have to believe the word. If I never believed the word when I was, if, oh my God, I, I don't know if I would be alive today. That's the, that's the truth, folks. I don't know if I would be alive today. But I believe the word of God. And the word of God proved itself true in my life. Then I began to teach on divine health and healing everywhere I went. And, and glory to God. Right now, I'm contemplating on a holy, a, a, a healing revival. Right now, but I want you to, I want you to understand something. When we begin to pray the word of God, when we begin to pray the word of God on behalf of someone else, when we begin to reach out on behalf of someone else, when we begin to stand in the gap on behalf of someone else, all God is asking of us, He said, "All things are possible to him that believe." Mark nine twenty three. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe if you can believe the word of god that you are praying because so, because you know we're going to pray the scripture and if you can believe the word of god that you are praying you know god is obligated to honor that word that coming out of your heart and out of your mouth the bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak we don't want to we don't want to our word to be to 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 hold us in bondage we don't want to be snared with the words of our mouth. Amen. According to Proverbs. We want our words to bring forth life. According to Proverbs. Amen. Chapter 4. And let's look at it. Chapter 4 and verse number. And verse number. Uh, glory to God. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number uh, 20. Proverbs. No. No. Uh, dun, 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 chapter, Proverbs chapter 4. Yeah. Let's go there. Proverbs chapter 4. Amen. And verse number, glory to God. Let's just go here. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 20. It says, it says, my son, 
My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my saying. Now notice what God is saying. This is, his word is so important. His word is so important. And when we take a hold of his word, the word has the power to give life, to bring the light on in a dark region. Amen. To bring light in a dark region. Glory to God. But notice what he said. Notice what he said in verse number verse number 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear to my saying. For they let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life to those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Just think when we begin to intercede for the hurting people. When we begin to pray for the hurting people, Lord Jesus, you bore our sick, you bore our sickness, you carried our disease, and by your stripes we are healed. We release your Father. You said you sent your word to heal, so Father, we release your word right now upon on the behalf of all the sick people of you know who you, whoever you're praying for, and begin to release that word upon them. Amen. And watch and see what God do because of your prayers. Amen. Look at verse number, verse number, verse number twenty-four. Put, put, the, put away. Now, verse number twenty-three. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Notice what he said. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. When you begin to speak the word of God, out of it are the issues of life. When you begin to speak the word of God, you're going, you, you you're going against the principalities. You're going against the powers. You're going against the rulers of the darkness of this world. You're going against the spiritual weakness in high places. And how are you doing it? You're doing it with truth. Because God's word is truth. And this is what he said in verse 12. Gird your law with truth. Amen. When we begin to speak truth into the atmosphere. Hallelujah. We, oh my God, the power of God is all over me. When we begin to speak truth into the atmosphere, it causes a chain reaction. The angels, see, there's angels that have been kept around about you. Amen. Remember Gehazi? Remember he go in and tell the man of God, said, man of God, they're here to, they're, they're, they're here. And then he goes out and looked and he said, he said, God open his, open his eyes that he, that he may see. He was looking with the natural eyes, but his spiritual eyes were still shut. His spiritual eyes were still shut. Then he looked up when the, when the man of God prayed, open his spiritual eyes that he may see. He looked up, he saw the horses and chairs, and uh, I mean, he saw, uh, he saw all the, the heavenly hosts and kept around about them. And uh, glory to God. When, see, we have... We have this. We have this, this. This host of God that has been kept around about us. When we are acting on the word of God properly, when we are standing on the word of God without fear, when we are standing on the word of God in faith, we can see the manifestation of God's word in our lives and in our states and in our cities and in our countries. Amen. In our churches, in our families. Hallelujah. 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 Friend, I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. God is not a man that he shall lie, nor is the son of man that he shall repent. Had he not said it, shall he not make it good? You know, God never does anything in the earth until he, until he speaks it through his servant, the prophet. I'm speaking to you today, thus said the Lord. I'm speaking to you today, thus said the Lord. Every word that I'm speaking... I'm, I'm not speaking to your intellect because I'm not an intellectual preacher. I'm a spiritual preacher. I'm speaking to your hearts today. Amen. I am speaking to your hearts today. And God is speaking to your hearts today by the power of His Spirit. Let, that, let not this word fall to the ground. Open up your heart and receive what God is saying to you today. Amen. Glory to God. And I believe that you will experience something like you never experienced. For remember, intercession is an act of going on the behalf of someone else. Amen. It's an act of going on the behalf of someone else. In other words, you're making up the hedge. You're standing be before God and you're standing before someone else. Who do you know right now that really need prayer? Amen. Just think about it right now for a, for, for a second. And then... Just and then just see and just 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 visualize the hand of God being extended toward that person, and you are the one that's going to give 
a voice to God to reach out to that person. Amen. You're the one that's going to release the, it's going to come out of the abundance of your heart. You're going to speak on behalf of that person to God. And God is going to release the angels to go to work on your words. On your words. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many of you have children right now that you want to see saved? How many of you have a mother or father that you want to see saved before they go into eternity? Amen. How many of you got, you know, children uh, strung out on drugs and living a street life and, and you know God has a better plan for their life, but they have been deceived by some false leaders. Amen. You know, a drug dealer, he's a leader. He's just a false leader. Amen. Uh, <laughs> he's still a leader, but he's just leading away in the way of darkness. He's not leading the way of light. He's still a leader. He has, to, he has the qualities of a good leader, but he's using his abilities the wrong way. And he's deceiving people, and he's leading them straight to hell. But you know what? You, as an intercessor, you can heat hot coals upon that person. Like, you know, when he, when he asks you for something, don't act like you're scared of him. Give him a cold drink of water if he asks for it. Amen? Your act of kindness, your act of love is like heating up hot coals upon his head. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you ready to see change in your neighborhood? Are you ready to see change in your city? in your state, in your country. Amen. We're about to go into prayer in just a minute. We're about to go into prayer in just a minute. But I want you, amen, to go through, listen to this message. Let it, let God speak to your heart. Listen to it over and over and over. Let God speak to your heart. Amen. See, faith doesn't come because you heard. The Bible said, Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing. That means you need to hear this over and over and over and over. Let it begin to rest in your spirit. I remember when I first started to learn about faith. I listened to Dr. Price's messages when I was first born again. Amen. And uh, and and he and I just listened to those to those those tapes over and over and over and over and over. And it settled in my spirit. Amen. And I began to walk by faith and didn't even realize what I was doing. But because I had listened to that message over and over and over and over, my spirit had taken that message and began to apply it to my life. Who did it? My spirit did it. How did my spirit do it? Because I allowed my spirit to be washed with that word day after day after day. And my spirit began to conform to the word that I was listening to. And that word began to transform my thinking. Oh, hallelujah. God wants to change the way you think. you got to begin to think the way God thinks. You see, God is righteous. Amen. God has, a, a, God has plans for your life. Amen. God has something special in store for you. You see... We have to we have to do it God's way if we're going to get the God kind of result. We have to seek first Matthew six thirty three. We have to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Then all the things that we have need of, folks, will be added to us. Amen. But we got to do it God's way, and God's way is the way of the Word. It's the way of the Word. You know there are there are people that are listening to me. There are people that listen to me, and uh, they don't, you know, they don't, they don't really understand a lot of things. Like I didn't understand a lot when I started teaching this, but when I kept on doing it because God told me to, I began to get more revelation knowledge on it. I began to understand it more and more and more. Why? Because I'm hearing the Spirit of God now speak to me, and I'm gonna tell you something right now. God is about to call for his mighty men and his mighty women. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. God is about to call for his mighty men and his mighty women to take their position. You see, you've been sitting on the back burner. 
and you know who you are. I'm talking to you now by the Spirit of God. You know who you are. You've been sitting on the back burner, and you've been saying, you've been saying, well, Lord, I'm just going to wait on you. God said, your time has come. Your time has come. Arise, shine, for thy light has come. For the glory of the Lord is now resting upon you. You do not sit there any longer. It's time for you to arise. It's time for you to begin to shine. Let God's glory go before you and you stand strong in his strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to begin to pray. Amen. Amen. In just a minute. I want you to get, I want you to become silent for just a few, just about, about, about just a few minutes. Now, not a few minutes, just about 30 seconds. Just be quiet for 30 seconds. And let's hear what God said to us. Which direction that he would have us to pray. Amen. Whew. I'm telling you, we've been talking about God and what he wants from us. Let's become silent right now before God. And then let God speak to our hearts. And he's going to direct us in a direction that he would have us to pray today. Amen. Let's go silent for 30 seconds. Amen. Amen. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Father, we come to you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Now God placed on your heart what he will have you to pray for. Amen. He placed on your heart what he will have you to pray for. You don't, don't just listen to me, but you begin to pray yourself. How many of you know... God, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us can use self-deliverance. Amen. We need to be delivered from some things. How many of you need to be delivered from some things? Amen. See, because, see, God wants your heart to be clean. God wants your heart to be pure to, when you begin to pray on behalf of others. First, let our hearts clean up our hearts that when we go in to pray on the behalf of someone else that we would not become a castaway because of sin in our lives so father in the name of jesus i pray father in the name of jesus as we come to you right now oh father we come to you we ask you father to let your light shine upon our hearts right now father should that should you see any sin in our lives is there anything in our life father that you are not pleased with god god we ask you father to let your light shine upon our heart bring it up to our mind god bring Bring it up into our spirit, God, what you have us to repent of right now. That when we go into spiritual prayer, spiritual warfare, God, that we will not be hindered in going in. That we will not be stopped by going as we go in, Lord God. But that we will be able to go beyond the veil. That we will be able to go into the place of where, the, the, where, you, where you are, Lord, the holy of holies. Oh, God, because God, when the priest went on the behalf of of the people the priest came right into your very presence and god we are that priest today we are the ones today that that is that is making up the hedge and we are, are standing in the gap we're the one that standing before you in the land god that you would not destroy the land but god should there be anything in our hearts anything in our life father that will hinder us from going in properly god we ask you to forgive us right now those of us that are going to pray right now father we ask you to forgive us right now of our sins wash us clean by the blood of, by the blood of the lamb father purge us with hyssop that we might be clean god i ask this in jesus name oh god god set us set us in a place god where we will examine our hearts from a pure heart, God, from a, oh God, that we, let us be sincere as we come to you right now on our, on, on, on our own behalf. God, that when we come to you on the behalf of someone else, God, that you will hear us and that you would, 
receive our prayers, God. Our prayers will not be hindered. Our prayers will not be blocked. Our prayers will not be stopped. But God, as we pray on behalf of those that are hurting, those that are wounded, those that are bruised, God, that you will heal us. So, Father, we apply the blood of Jesus Christ right now over the, over our, over us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. And, Father, I apply the blood of Christ right now over everyone under the sound of my voice. Over everyone under the sound of my voice. I apply the blood of Christ right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we put on the whole armor of God today. We gird up our loins, Father. We gird up our loins with truth. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet shone with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Lord. And above all, Father, we take the shield of faith that we may be able to quench all the fiery dust of the wicked. Father, we, we take the helmet of salvation right now, Father. We put it on by faith in Jesus' name. Father, we take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And with all men in prayer and supplication, Father, we come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Father, Father, right now, I just thank you, Lord God. We are the body of Christ. And Father, I pray for the body of Christ. And I come against every satanic work of the enemy that is working against the body of Christ right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that your word is alive and helped and healed to all our flesh. Your word will not return void, Father. So, Father, as I pray for the body of Christ, God, I ask you, Lord God, as we make up the hedge and stand in the gap, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, I thank you right now, Father, that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish that what pleases you, Father, in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you and I praise you for it, Father. So, Father, as I make up the heads right now and as I stand in the gap for your people, Lord God, Father, I thank you, Lord. Your word is alive. Your word is health. Your word is healing. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my God. And I walk. I thank you, Father, for this time. I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father. Oh, my Lord. Father, as I look at the word of God concerning this prayer right now, of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and uh, verse number 27, God, you said in your word, know ye now are ye, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. So, Father, I pray for the body of Christ, which are members in particular. Father, I lift up the body of Christ to you, Father, right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over their hearts and over their minds right now, Father. Because, Father, we are members. Each and every one of us are very, uh, Father, you, you, God, you, you created us and you wonderfully fashioned us in your image and after your likeness. We are your body, and you are our God, Father. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your word, God, will not return void. We are your body, and I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will touch your body right now, that you will bless your people right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Father. I thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father. I worship you, and I praise you, Father. I praise you, Father. Oh, God, for what you're doing in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, you said in your word, Father, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, and verse number 21, you said, Be be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Because, Father, you created us to walk in the light, and you don't want us to be overcome with evil, God, but you want us to walk in love. You want us to walk in your anointing. You want us to walk in your strength. So we overcome evil with good, Father. Father, we, we let good rest in our heart. We let good things, good thoughts rest upon our mind. We bring every thought in every every. If we bring every thought into obedience, into captivity to the Lord Christ, and we say, Father, we will follow your example. We'll follow your word. We'll follow your will. We'll follow your purpose, your plan for our life. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that your word will not return void, God, because, God, you have given us power over all the powers of the enemy. Oh, glory to your name, Father, and I worship you for it, Father. And, God, you said in First John chapter 4 and verse number 4, you 
ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Father, your spirit is in us. We are your, we are yours, Lord God. We are the sheep of your pastors, Lord God. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving, Lord God, and into your courts with praise, Father. We thank you for this day, Lord God. Father, I pray for the body of Christ. I pray, Father, because God, we are your people, the sheep of your pastors, Lord God. And God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are mindful of your creation, Lord God. You created us in your own image and after your likeness, Father. And Father, I come against that spirit of deception that is working overtime, trying to destroy the mind of your people, trying to bring them into bondage, oh God. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you will protect us, Lord God, as we walk up right before you, Father, that you will protect us from the work of enemy, from the work of the enemy, Lord God, that is out to steal, kill, and to destroy. Because, God, you said that you come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Oh, my Lord and my God. Now, Father, you said in, the, in your word that the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. He maketh us to lie down in green pastures. He leads up beside the still water. He restoreth our soul. God, I thank you for restoration today. I thank you, Father. Restoration is, is, is being uh, poured out upon the body of Christ right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that restoration is being poured out upon our hearts and upon our mind, upon our spirit, Lord God. Father, we are waking up. We've been sleeping long enough, Father. Now, God, you are calling us to wake up. You call us to come forth. God, you call us to arise. You call us to wake up and to see ourselves as you see us. Oh God, and you said in Psalm chapter 20, you said in Psalm 23, verse number 4, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. God, God, you have called us to stand firm on your word. You said, find my brother and be strong in the Lord. Ephesians 5, Ephesians 6 and 10. You said, find my brother and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God, we are not called to stand in our own strength. We are not called to stand in our own ability, but we are called to stand upon your word because your word has, your word has to, has the, it's the source of life. Your word is the author of our life. Oh God, we stand on your word knowing that we will not be defeated because your word is alive. Your word is health and healing to all our flesh. Oh God, you're bringing restoration to our heart. We don't have to fear, Lord God. We will fear no evil for thou is with us, Lord. Your word and your spirit to comfort us, Lord God. You prepare a table before us, Lord God, in the presence of our enemies, God. Oh God, we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, Father. We thank you for that, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh, Father, we thank you for that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And Father, I just thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. And Father, in righteousness shall thou be established. Father, you want to establish us in righteousness according to Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 14. God, you want to establish us in righteousness. Oh God, I thank you, Lord God. And great shall be the peace of thy children, Father. Father, we are your children. And great shall be the peace of thy children because you are establishing us in righteousness. We are not, uh, because God, we are doing it your way. We are doing it according to the word. We are not doing it according to the will of the flesh, the arm of the flesh, but we are doing it according to the word of God. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you for that, Lord God, that you are, that you are God, and that you are, that you are giving us the ability to stand in these last days as children, as heirs, and, and, as, and as manifested children. Oh, God, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Oh, Kurubo Satalabaki Telabaki. Manre Siki Larabaso to Larabaki. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, praise you, praise you, Lord God. Now let's 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 pray for our country now. Father, we pray for our country right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, for America. We pray, Father, for leaders of our country right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bring every we bring we come against the principalities that is that is working over our our leaders, our leaders, uh, uh, the White House. 
We come against the principality, Father, that is resting over our, hanging over our White House. We come against the rulers of the darkness of this world and the spiritual weakness in the high places that is working against the mind of our president, the mind of our leaders, Lord God. We come against this wicked and tormented spirit right now, Father. We come against this spirit of the Antichrist right now in the name of Jesus that is trying to turn America over to darkness. Father, I break that power right now in the spiritual realm. I come, I Thank you, Father, right now. Father, I command angels to go to, to begin to walk a, a good warfare on their behalf in Jesus' name. Father, set their hearts and their minds free, Father. Oh, God, I ask you, Father, to do a work in this day, Father, that the world will look and see and know that if it had not been for the Lord God on our side, oh, God, just act. Just as it was in, 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 in 2 Chronicles chapter, 19, chapter 18 and 19, Father. When Jehoshaphat was in trouble, God, he turned his heart to you. And he called the people of God of Jerusalem and Judea. He called them all into prayer. He called them all into fasting and prayer. Father, I'm thanking you right now, Father, that as you lead us into, as we are being led into intercessory prayer for our country, Father, there will be people that's going to be moved upon, Father, every month to go on this three-day fast with us every month, God, and they're going to begin to see the hand of God moving in and through their life because of their prayers, Father, and they're going to begin to see their prayers being answered, God, and they're going to say, wow, I should have been doing this a long time ago. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that they will see the manifestation of your word. Father, as they begin to pray for our country, as they begin to pray for our nation, as they begin to stand in the gap, pulling down the principalities, pulling down the strongholds in Jesus' name. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind the principalities. We bind the spiritual weakness in high places. We come against those, those, work, those, those evil workers of iniquities right now in Jesus' name. We pull them down and we trample them under the bottom of our foot right now in Jesus' name. God, your word declares, God, that you've given us the power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt us God so Father we are not afraid we are not ashamed of who we are we are not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation to all of them that believe to the Jew first and also to the Greek Father we are the Gentile and your word is powerful in our life so we yield to you Lord God we thank you Lord God for this day we thank you for it right now in Jesus name we come against this wicked and tormented spirit that is working against the body of Christ that is the we come against these ungodly laws that have been passed that is trying to be pushed upon the body of Christ. Oh God, we come against that demonic force right now. That spirit of homosexuality, Lord God. We come against it in Jesus' name. We bind that wicked and that, that wicked and, 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 and unclean spirit right now in Jesus' name. Father, for it was that spirit that you destroyed Sodomy and Gomorrah, Father. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will show mercy upon your people. God, let not the wicked let not the wicked prevail against the church with this demonic spirit, Lord God, of, of, of homosexuality. But God, let the churches of God rise up and be heard in these last days. Let them begin to pray. Let them begin to cry out. Let them begin to seek your face like never before. Oh God, let the church wake up and see that the danger has come and that it's time for us to pray like never before. Oh God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. This is not a time for the church to sit back and be quiet. This is not a time for us to be silent. It's a time we begin to cry out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for it. I bind that demonic spirit that is working, that is working through top, uh, this, 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 uh, uh, this uh, ISIS and, and Apple computer, uh, 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 Tim Cook, and in the name of Jesus, I come against this demonic spirit right now, in the name of Jesus, that is coming against uh, uh, Indiana, fight right now, Father, I pray for the government of Indiana, I pray for the people of Indiana, that they will maintain a strong stand against this demonic force, in Jesus' name, let them not give in to this demonic force, but let them be strong in the Lord, and in the power of His might, let them pray put their confidence in you, Father, like never before. And God, you show us how strong on the governor's behalf of Indiana. God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And all those that are back in that governor, Lord God, in prayer, Father, show yourself strong on their behalf. I pray, I, Father, I just thank you for that man, for that man of God to take a bold stand in this, in this time of darkness in Jesus' name. I thank you for that governor, Lord God, who is seeing, who, who understands the value of life 
Oh God, and the value of Judea Christian lives in Jesus' name that are not willing to give in because of because of society, but willing to take a bold stand. I pray God that you would, uh, that you would exalt this governor in the name of Jesus and place him in a position that his voice would be heard, that he will make a difference all around the world in Jesus' name. Oh God, I thank you. I bless this man of God in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, for. I thank you, Lord God, for Jerusalem, Lord God. I pray for Jerusalem right now, Father. And God, I lift up the I lift up the president of, of Jerusalem right now, Father. And God, I ask you, Lord, that you that you that you anoint this man, that you equip this man, Father. Oh God, I thank you, Lord God, that as they begin to take their position, Lord God, that they will not be dependent on no one, God, because God, you are raising up your people in these last days. You are raising up your people in these last days. And God, you are separating them. They are a separated one, Father. People that you have, that they are the apple of your eye and you have raised them up, God. And you have caused them to be set apart from the world. And God, the world is going to look to them. They're going to try to destroy them. But God, you're going to raise them up to be a strong tower in the last days. Oh God, I thank you for Jerusalem. I thank you for the peace of Jerusalem. I release the peace of God right now upon every citizen of Jerusalem. Upon every Jew. Amen. That you have called out that you have placed in your that you have that you have set your seal upon God. I release the blessing of God upon them in Jesus' name. Yeah. Father, I cancel every curse that's been spoken over them. I cancel every demonic assignment that's been sent their way. I release those angels of God right now to be kept round about Jerusalem. Join hand in hand, not allowing the enemy to penetrate the barrier. But God, you will raise up a standard. You will raise up a standard in this day. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for the families of America. I pray, Father, for the families of America. In the name of Jesus, those that have children, those that have children that have gone astray, those that have children that are strung out on drugs, those that have children that are living in the streets, Lord God. Not, Father, I just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. In the name, I plead the blood of Jesus over these people, Lord God. And I ask you, Father, God, that you will touch, that you will minister to these people, Lord God. Father, I ask you that you will that you will begin to bring labors into their path, Father. Father, you, you're equipping you're equipping labors, Lord God, laborers. You said the harvest is truly great, but the labors are few. And God, you're raising up laborers, Lord God, to go into the harvest field, to go into the field to work in these last days, to bring in the harvest. God, I, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And God, these men, these women, these young ladies and these young men that are living the street life, Father, God, I pray, Father, you'll put a hook in their jaw. God, that you begin to you begin to speak to their heart, God, and begin to and begin to deal with their heart. Let them see their that where they at, God, is not where they should be. God, you touch their hearts, God. God, I know that it's not impossible because you touched my heart. I was just like those people, Lord God. I was out there on the drugs. I was out there on the alcohol. But God, you touched my heart. And I know you can touch their hearts too. I thank you for it right now, God, in Jesus' name. I just give you glory, Father. I give you praise for it, Father. Now, Father, I pray for the fivefold ministry gifts. I pray, Lord God, that you would touch every man of God right now, every woman of God right now around the world, Father. God, in every state, in every city, in every in every town, in every in every country, Lord God. I pray for the fivefold ministry gifts, those that you have set up, Father, those that you have anointed, those that you have appointed, those that you have set in office, God. I ask you, Lord God, that you will just, oh God, let the blood of Jesus Christ be rest upon them right now. From the crowns of here to the Father, regardless of their status in life, regardless of their status in ministry, oh God, not one of them is above you. They all are subject to you, Lord God. And Father, because the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And God, you will it and turn it the way you will. So Father, I lift up these men of God right now. And I ask you, Father, that you would touch their hearts right now, Father. And that God, everything that's in their life, everything that, that they're dealing with in their heart that is impure, that is not holy, that is not right before you, God. I ask you, Father, that you begin to purge them right now. Purge the every man and every woman of God, Father. Purge them, Lord God, that they will not give in to the, the success to the society of, uh, of wham, Father. Because God, we're going to give an account for what's going on for we are allowed to take place here in this land. God, and I pray, Father, that we would that we would become that we would walk around not with a a, 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 a spaghetti backbone, but with a strong backbone. A strong backbone, Father. 
men and women of God that are that are declare the word of God regardless. And Father, if they whatever they have to go through, Father, they will suffer the wrong, Father. But God, they will not give in. They will not compromise. They will not quit. But they will honor you, Father, and you will protect them, Father. You will become their real reward in their life. They will not have to look behind them, Father, because they will continue to press in. They're going to continue to gain more ground. They're going to take back territory that the enemy has stolen. And God, I bless those men of God right now, those that will be strong. And God, you're going to use them even like you use Gilead, Father. And you're going to do great exploits, God. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And God, I praise you for it. I pray, Father, that your men and women of God will not compromise. I come against every demonic witchcraft, every spirit of, of divination that is working against these men of God, that is working against these women of God. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you will give them the faith, give them the courage not to quit, not to give up, not to look to the things that they're going through, but look to the bigness that is in you. Because the greater one is in us, is able to bring us through whatever we are facing. Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray, Lord God, for my for for for, for uh, my family. Now, you people listen to me, you start praying for your family right now. Amen. I pray for my sisters and my brothers right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for my, if I pray, Father, I got five brothers and six sisters, Lord God. And Father, I pray for them. I ask you, Father, let the blood of Jesus Christ begin to rest upon them right now. Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would touch each and every one of them. Oh, God. And Father, if they are living in the life of sin right now, Father, I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you forgive them, Lord God. And God, that you would, that, that you would uh, give them a, a opportunity, Lord God, even today, Lord God, to repent of their sins, God. Speak to their hearts, Lord God, and God cause them to turn away from their wickedness, Lord God. Let them not go out into eternity, Lord God, without confessing their sin and acknowledging you as Lord and Savior of their life. God, you promised me my household. I call my brothers and sisters all saved and delivered from the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of your dear son. Father, I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for my wife and for her family. Oh, God, I just ask you, Father, that you would touch, that you would minister to them, Father, in every way, Father. God, just let your compassion, your love be extended toward each and every one of them, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Father, that, Lord God, not, I pray for her father, Lord God, and I pray for her mother, Lord God. God, that you would touch, that you would minister. Oh, God, that you would strengthen, that you would, oh, God, that, give, that you would let the peace of God begin to rest upon them. I claim their souls for the kingdom of God. I cancel every demonic witchcraft that is working against their will, their mind, their emotions in Jesus' name. Oh, God, I thank you for setting them free. And I pray for her children, Lord God. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, that God, that you are that you're doing something supernatural right now, yeah. and God, you are bringing them out of darkness. God, you are allowing the light to shine upon them even now. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, I praise you and I glorify you, Father. I glorify you for it, Father. Now, Father, I pray for all of my internet listeners. I pray for all my Facebook friends and all and all my. Uh, I pray for all of my friends, Father. That, that, that follow me on YouTube and and, uh, and all these people, Father. I ask you, Lord God, that you would touch right now their lives, that you would touch their families. Oh, God, I ask you, Father, for miracles right now. Father, I ask you to let the heal. Father, I release your healing power right now upon the people, Lord God, under the sound of my voice that are listening to me over the internet right now. I release your anointing and your power right now, Father, to begin to rest upon them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Oh, God, Touch in Jesus' name. I thank you for it, and I bless you, and I glorify you. Oh, God, I just thank you right now, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I just want to encourage you people, don't give up and don't quit. It's, you know, God is calling us. He wants to press in. We are in the last day, folks. We got to press in. We can't, we can't give up. Because things don't look good. We can't quit because things don't look like it's going right. We got to keep pressing in. Amen. We got to keep pressing in. Don't let your children, don't let your families, don't let your neighbors uh, be lost when you can do something about it. Begin to grow to God on their behalf. And begin to see a change take place in their lives. Oh, glory to God. Now, Father, I pray for all those that support this ministry. I pray, Father, for all those that support. I pray for all of my partners, Lord yes. God, in yes. Jesus' name. 
And God, I ask you, Father, every time you bless me, Father, I ask you to bless them. And every time you do something big in my life, Father, I want you to do something big in their lives. Father, I ask you, Father, for a double portion of the anointing to rest upon them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, when they, as they give into this ministry, Lord God, support this ministry, Father, I ask you to give them back double for their trouble in Jesus' name. Let them not experience lack. Let them not experience defeat. Father, let there not be a want in their life that you will not be, that you will not see, Lord God. And God, you will answer it before it even be made known to their hearts. Oh God, I thank you for it, Father. And then they will look up and say, look what God just did, Father. God, because that's, that's your heart, God. You desire to bless your servants, God. It is your heart desire to bless your people. Oh, God, I thank you, Father, for blessing your people in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead now. It's time for us to take up our tithes and offerings right now. Oh, glory to God. I pray that you, oh, my God. Thank you, Father. Let's just worship, let's worship God for a little bit before we go in. I just want to worship him right now. Father, I worship you and I praise you, Father. I worship you, Father, and I praise you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. Father, I thank you for those that join me in prayer. I thank you, Lord God, for those that that, that are honored you and praying with me instead of just listening to me, God. Father, I pray, Father, that you would use them on uh, to reach the people that you have placed upon their hearts and to see, and to see a, a mighty work begin to go forth on their behalf. Father, I pray for those that support this ministry. Father, there are people that have sent in special prayer requests, Father, for their families and for their loved ones. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would touch this dear sister's mother, her sister and brothers. God, that you would bring the peace in her home and her life, Father, and that she would understand, God, it's all because of the seed that she's sown into this yes, ministry, Lord God. I ask you this in the name of Jesus. Sister, you know who you are. You ask for special prayer for your family and for yourself. And right now, I'm believing God that, 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 the, that, that the hand of God is moving on your behalf right now. In Jesus' name. And you, there's several ladies, you, you, you've sown some seed and you, and you, some of you just, you just, you just, you just uh, wanted to be blessed. So I just speak blessings over you. I speak blessings over you in the name of Jesus. And, and, and you gentlemen that have sown seed into the ministry, you know, that there's, there's always a need here. So I'm asking you to do it again. Sow another seed. Amen. Let me speak blessings over you. Father, I ask you, Father, for divine protection over your men of God, those that are, are, are supporting this ministry, Lord God. I ask you for divine protection over their mind, their will, their emotion. And whatever demonic force that is working against them, Father, God, they will not be able to touch them in Jesus' name. Father, so we're not focused on what the enemy is doing, but we're going to focus on what you are doing. And God, you are bringing us to, to, be, you're bringing us to our position of, of, of divine strength. Our divine strength is in you, Lord God. And it's not in focusing on what the enemy is doing, but it's in focusing on what you are doing. So, Father, I ask you, Father, to let those that are supporting this ministry, let them get their eyes off of the circumstances. Let them get their eyes off of the enemy. Father, just like when, when Jesus was walking on the water and Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to you. Peter began to walk on the water and he took his eyes off of God, off of the Lord. He began to look at the enemy, what the enemy was doing. And that's when he began to sing. You get your eyes off of your in, off of that enemy. You keep your eyes on Christ that you will not sink and what that you will not fail in what God has called you to do. Don't allow yourself to be sidetracked trying to trying to trying to see what the enemy is doing. Keep your eyes on what God is doing because see God is the one that, that you're following. You're not following the enemy. You're following God. Keep your eyes on what God is doing, and you will find out that the enemy that's been messing with you has no power over you because God has given you the power over all the powers of your enemy as long as you stay focused on him and not your enemy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, Father, I just thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, those of you that want to plant a seed into the ministry, you can go to my website, ladbergenministries.com. And you can go to, uh, to the donation button and you can plant your seed there using your Visa, MasterCard, or whatever card you use. And also, uh, uh, there's a, a prayer request uh, button there. You, you go there and, and leave us your prayer request also. 
so we can know how to be praying for you. And also, those of you that want to mail in your your gift of love, amen, uh, your tithes or your offer, whatever the Lord will have you do, uh, you can go to, you could just write down this address right here. You can mail it to New Life in Christ Jesus Church. That's New Life in Christ Jesus Church, P.O. Box, 417913. That's P.O. Box, 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. That's New Life in Christ Jesus Church, P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. God bless you. Amen. And we uh, look forward to hearing from you. Amen. Now, we're going to take about tithes and offering right here. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Amen. Uh, write a check, honey. 250. Okay, this is this is the, the baby's offering. Okay. Amen. 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 As as as, as everyone get their offering together, I want to read you a scripture. Amen. As you prepare your offering. Amen. Uh, first, uh, second Corinthians chapter nine. That's second Corinthians chapter nine. And begin reading verse number six. Glory to God. And it says, but I say, he which sought sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And he which sowed bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is, verse 8, and God, I like this part right here, verse number 8, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always have him all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, verse number nine says, As it is written, He hath dispersed abroad, He has given to the poor, His righteousness remaineth forever. Now, He that ministers seed to the sower. See, who, what is seed come? Who's going to minister the seed to you? God is giving you the seed to sow. God is giving you the seed to sow. And as you honor God in sowing the seed that God placed upon your heart, notice what it says right here, verse number 10. Now he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. Amen. He's going to minister to you the seed to sow, and then he's going to give you the bread for your food. Amen. And notice what he said, and multiply your seed song. God said he's going to multiply your seed song. And now I like this part too. And increase the fruit of your righteousness. And increase the fruit of your righteousness. Your righteousness is a part, is connected to your giving. Amen. Your righteous lifestyle is connected to your giving. Amen. So when you give, give from your heart that what you give will touch God. Amen. That's what you give will touch God. Hallelujah. And I want you to prepare your hearts because I'm going to speak a blessing over this offering and over your offering as well. I'm going to speak a blessing over your offering and over my offering as well. Father, I hold this offering up before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that all things do work together for good to them that love you, Father. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that that as we give, yes. according to your word, God, yes. you said in the book of Malachi that you will rebuke yes. the devourer for our yes. sake. Yes. And you will cause our ground to give forth its fruit in its season. Yes. Yes. Father, yes. we consider the devourer rebuked. <clears throat> we this consider, Father, that every enemy that working against us, Father, yes. has come to a halt right now. Yes. 
because we are walking in righteousness. We're doing it your way, Father. And as we give, Father, it shall be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into our bosom. For, Father, you love the, the blessed your servant. You have pleasure in the prosperity of your servants. Oh, God, and I thank you that you take pleasure in the prosperity of us. Yes. You want to bless us. You want us to rise up in the, that we will not be lacking in the area of finance, that we, can, that we can do what you call us to do. So, Father, I ask you that as the people give right now, Father, Father, that you will supernaturally move on their behalf, that you will supernaturally move on their behalf, that they will not experience lack. Father, there are those that have to give, Father, right now. They have to give right now. Father, speak to their hearts and tell them what they should give. And then, Father, as they obey you, and Father, I ask you to minister to their hearts according to your word. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give them to their bosom. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank Father, this, this, this often is blessed, and your often is blessed also. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. You may be listening to me right now. You say, Pastor, I've never given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I've never made him the Lord of my life yet. But I thank God that for you, Pastor, and, and I want you, will you please pray for me today? I feel like I need to make a change in my heart today. Yes, I will pray for you right now. And for you that have backslid, you that are walking, have walked away from God, you want to rededicate your life to God right now, I want to pray for you also. Amen. Because I understand when you when you backslid, I mean, sometimes it's just like the devil do everything he can to keep you from coming back to God. But I want to assure you today that as you repent of your sins and as you, and as you uh, open up your heart uh, with a sincere uh, desire of your heart to return to God, mm -hmm. let me tell you some folks. God said He was married to the backslider. He's not gonna. He's not gonna leave you in that state, in that in that in that frame of, of, of mind or that state that you're in. He's gonna come to you the moment you ask Him to, and He's gonna begin a new work in your heart. Amen. So when I pray for you that are accepting Jesus Christ for the first time. Remember you that are returning to the Lord. I want you to say the same prayer also. Amen. And just let the Lord minister to your heart. Let's pray. Father, I thank you right now for every man and every woman under the sound of my voice that want to give their heart to you for the first time or for those that want to rededicate their life to you. Oh, God, I know that you are first, you, that you forgive us, Father. God, you, you give us first chance, second chance, third chance, fourth chance. How many chances we need to get it right, God? You will not hinder us or stop us from coming as often as we need to until we get it right. So, Father, as this person is going to rededicate their life to you, Father, God, I believe, Father, today that you're going to touch their hearts in a very significant and a very powerful way. And, God, they're going to know that they've been touched by you. I thank you for it in advance in Jesus' name. Now, you may be listening to right now and say, Pastor, please pray for me. Well, I'm going to do that right now. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, repent of my I repent of my sins. I believe that you are the Son of God. And I believe that you died for my sin. And, I that you died. and because I believe this in my heart and, and confess it with my mouth, with my mouth I, believe I believe today, today I, am I am saved. I believe, I believe today, today I am free, I am free from sin. From, from guilt, from, guilt from, shame. from shame. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for, healing for healing me and for setting me free. Setting me free. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I receive, I receive my, forgiveness my forgiveness by faith, by faith. Right, now. right now. Amen. 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 If you receive your forgiveness right now, okay. remember, it's by faith that you receive your forgiveness. You believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross by faith you receive your forgiveness by faith, and God will heal your heart because you release your faith for your salvation, for his salvation, and for your deliverance. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. You're here today. You need prayer right now. I'm going to pray for you right now.
Do you need prayer right now? I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> as she prepared to go to the operate to be operated on, Father, tomorrow. Father soon, Father, I ask you, Lord God, that you will, oh God, prepare her heart, God. And God, I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for a miracle in this in her legs right now. In this area, Father. God, I know that you are God. And there's nothing that you can't do. You can do everything but fail. I release your healing power right now, Father, in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord God, that all things do work together for good to them that love you. And I believe, Father, that this dear sister is beginning to learn to love you more and more. Yes. I bless her now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Anyone else want prayer? Amen. Amen. That's okay. That's okay. Amen. Now, Father, I pray for all those that are listening to me right now over the internet, and those that are listening to me in their homes, in their, in their vehicles, in their cars, <laughs> or wherever they're listening to me at right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, that you would touch every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Father, that you would touch right now and that you would minister to this people. Oh, God, that you would move right now supernaturally and set them free, Father, in every area of their life. Father, I pray for the peace of God to rest upon them. I pray, Father, that every thought that they, that they will bring every demonic thought into captivity to the Holy Ghost and submit their minds, submit their wills, submit their emotions to you, Lord God. And let you, every time they get a thought that they know is not coming from you, Father, that they will cast those thoughts down in Jesus' name. They will not let those thoughts dwell in their mind, in their heart. Father, I release the peace of God that surpasses all understanding upon them right now because, God, you said we should think on those things which are good, pure, perfect, loving, of a good report. You said if there be any virtue, should there be any praise, we should think on these things. Father, I pray that you give us good things to think about, that our dreams will be positive dreams, not dreams that will defeat us, but dreams that will uplift us, Lord God, that will cause us to ex excel in life, not to cause us to be diminished in life, but to excel in life. I release, Father, right now, the, the, the good dreams, Father, dreams of life, dreams of, of wholeness to rest upon them. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us today. And remember to join us on Sunday morning for our Sunday morning service at 11.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. Amen. And then also on Sunday nights at 6.30 p.m. Yeah. And I will ask you to do me a favor. Uh, introduce this message to your friends. Share these messages with your friends. Because, see, they may need these, they may need these lessons that I'm teaching also to help them to be stronger in their prayer life. God bless you. This is Pastor Larry Birkins saying, have a wonderful and blessed day. See you again on Sunday. Bye-bye now.